Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to Broman Rhapsody. This is where we review cars and motorcycles. I'm the host for motorcycles and the punk does the cars. Today we are back at Motorcycles of Greensboro with guess who? It's the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Professor. Oh. How are you, sir? Compliments are always welcome. Good to see you again, <laughs> Abro. Yeah. How are you? How have you I been? I am doing wonderful. So what do you have in front of us, Professor? Uh, I see the letters GS, so I'm assuming we're continuing our GS trend? Well, you know, it is October. It is October. It is Fest. October. October Fest. It's an R90 Scrambler. It's an urban GS, so it's a limited production again. Mm -hmm. uh, it is done in the 40th anniversary uh, uh, color scheme, and it also includes the 719 option. Okay. And for BMW, what 719 option means is that you get some of these beautiful touches of uh, of aluminum, you know, just metallurgy and workings, such things as like little details here little and, inserts, and yeah. the, val the valve cover are uh, a little more elaborate just beautiful that I you know just jewelry I guess for yeah, your motorcycle. Yeah. it's kind of stuff that most people would want to do after the fact with BMW we have the option of being able to order it from the factory from the fact. so this is the 2021 BMW R9 T urban GS in today's episode we're gonna talk about the bike see some of its cool features I'll take it out on the road share my thoughts with you guys talk about the cost of ownership and assign it a bromance score but before we do all of that, if you are new to Broman, give us a like and click that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. It's me, it's your boy Bro, and I am your Broman. So this is the anniversary special color, the black and the yellow. Yes. It uh, pops out really well. Right? It does, it does. I have reason to believe that if memory serves me right, black and yellow were the original colors of the GS when they came out 40 years 40 ago. Years ago. Yeah. I love this color. Kind of makes you think that you're a big fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers, black and yellow, but... I didn't thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we're moving to Pittsburgh or anything no. like that. We're gonna, it's cold. We're going to, yeah, yeah, it's cold. We're going to stay right here in North Carolina and we don't get much snow. None. Uh, our riding season is longer. Longer. It and rains it is, a lot. But. It is Carolina. So all you got to do is pull your bike out of the garage and next thing you know, the, open, the right. sky opens and you've got some water. But uh, we won't dehydrate. We, no, never. <laughs> we all know that BMW makes these motorcycles, these great motorcycles. They've been making motorcycles since the 20s? Yeah, years? yeah, yeah, the mid 20s. Yeah. Now, the R series, so the R90, the R1250 GS, R1250 GSA. So basically, the R series basically means that BMW is retaining the boxer engine. Ah. These two beautiful, massive cylinders that are sitting out to the sides of the uh, of the motorcycle, which is you know for for an air cooled engine, I mean it is probably the best way to to cool the engine cool is to engine. have them out there in the open and and let the air do what the air does, which right. is cool and cool them down. The other pur purpose is they double up as a very expensive pair of crash bars. Very expensive <laughs> very crash expensive. bars. Uh, that would be uh, yeah. I, I would advise putting crash. <laughs> <laughs> engine protection bars <laughs> um, so that if you are had if you're one of those riders that has a tendency of having oopsies on an often uh, at least you're not uh, ruining the beautiful metallurgy that's especially done on this uh, option 719 now with the R9T uh, just to kind of refresh your memory, mm -hmm. BMW decided to build a Roadster, which mm -hmm. is the R9T. Nine. With the different versions of the R9T that are being offered, BMW effectively doubled uh, their offering to consumers. Mm. Uh, to motorcyclists, you know, because we have the R9T, the R9T Scrambler, the Pure, uh, all the different variations, yes, yes, um, yes. you know, whether it's more street looking or less street looking, not that the R9T is really, I wouldn't take an R9T off-roading really, yeah. I mean, light off-roading, yes, your fire roads, your gravel roads, as long as it's not getting too involved, too off-road-ish. Uh, the R90 will be okay, but again, you know, it was just that fun factor of being able to do a high exhaust exit, or you know, putting some a little bit knobby tire, you know, just a little bit of a knobby yeah. tire on the bike, and then that enduro-inspired front fender. Right, I like right, that little right. thing all, sitting right, all the way to the right. top. 
Right, so, well, you know, they did put the GS emblem on this one, so they have to do a little off-roadish type <laughs> touches, but at the end of the day, the R9T is an on-road bike, shaft-driven, obviously, and all the benefits that, you know, that we know they're synonymous with, uh, uh, BMW, with BMW, like yeah. riding modes, traction yeah. control, anti-lock braking systems. The R9T offers less wind protection or mm -hmm. protection from the elements, so obviously, you know, if you're, if you were to start going long distance, you would get a little bit more of the fatigue from wind standing in yeah. the wind and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, definitely a fun, fun bike to ride around town. Uh, nimble, it feels light, although the bike in itself uh, tips the scales pretty well. Uh, but because of the the way the engine is is put out there and the leverage that it gives you at the handlebars, the bike feels light. So what do you think, Professor? Let's do a quick little walk around of this Yeah, bike? absolutely. All right, so starting off from the front of the bike, this has the LED DRL lights. If you look at the fender in the front, it's that enduro inspired GSA, GS, GSA looking front fender. Really cool, I call it the beak. <laughs> Looks like a bird's beak, but it serves its purpose. Nobby tires up front, dual discs with Brembo brakes. That's the 1170cc boxer engine. Puts out 109 horses, 87 foot pound of torque. And this has a 28 and a half degree rake angle. What's a rake angle you ask? Draw a perpendicular from the steering mount, follow the fork tube, that angles the rake angle. Shorter the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is and larger the rake angle, the more stable it is at higher speeds, highway speeds and such. Sports bikes tend to have a rake angle close to 24, whereas big heavy cruisers are closer to 30, 32. You have these little guards for your handlebars. It's gonna save you from flying debris, chips, rocks, whatever. Beautiful paint scheme. It tells you that it's the 40 years of GS, just in case you didn't know or you had forgotten. That's that, even the seat is black and yellow. How oh, cool with the little GS inscribed there. Dual exhausts coming out from the side. These are Akrapovich exhausts. How oh, cool, and this is stock on, these, on this bike. You have that ugly fender that most bikes come with. Two turn signals, tail light, license plate holder. And check, even these wheels on this bike are those beautiful golden wheels with spokes in them. Again, driving home the point that this is part of the GS family. Cool, right? Really cool. And this is what the professor was talking about. You have these like little aluminum inserts all throughout the bike. That's the air intake that has this nice finish to it as well. Part of the 719 package. So see it says option 719. All of these inserts. This is, air, this is an air cooled engine, of course. And you see these fins. Anytime an engine has these fins, it's an air cooled. This also comes stock with the steering dampener. Now this does not have keyless ignition, this has your regular old school key, put it in, turn it on, that turns on the bike. So you have these beautiful round mirrors on both ends and your handlebar controls on your left are your, are your passing lights, cruise control, you can set your cruise control, hazard lights, toggle through your traction modes, menu turn signal horn and on your right hand side you again get the round mirror with your heated grips driving mode riding modes the kill switch and the starter button in the middle here you have this speedometer uh, old school speedometer in both miles and kilometers per hour and then you have lights abs turn signals traction control neutral air messages and high beams and in the middle you have this like little uh, display screen here it, it tells you which mode you're on and it gives you your odometer your miles and if you press the menu button you can cycle through it trip one trip two outside temperature engine temperature time service like when does your next service due and you can enter your setup and then you're back to your odometer can you tell our viewers a little bit about motorcycles of Greensboro absolutely gladly uh, motorcycles of Greensboro is um, I would like to consider it a motorcyclist enthusiast center uh, as opposed to a dealership. You know, I, I, for some reason when the word dealership comes up, you know, I, immediately I get this impression of like pushy sales guys and, you know, and, and technicians that are just, you know, they're, you know, elbow deep in the grease, in the oil. Not the case here. 
uh, not the case here at all. We are all, we are a group of motorcycling enthusiasts that chose to um, spend our time here. I wouldn't even call this work. You know, this is this is fun. Um, and if you enjoy what you do, you don't work you don't a day work, in your life, yeah. right? You know, and spending time with your friends, talking about motorcycling and your experiences and uh, sharing your stories and sharing your knowledge is hardly work. It's hardly um, work, yeah. So uh, what Motorcycle at Greensboro is, is it's a motorcycling fun center. You know, there's about combined between Paul and Rourke and Pat, our new recruit. Um, <laughs> You know, there's probably about 300 years worth of motorcycling Motorcycle. experience combined wow. within wow. these walls. I'll put the website link in the video description below. You gotta come check them out. You have questions, they have answers, they have stories. It's an experience. <laughs> and if they have stories, we'd love to hear them. Yeah, if you have stories, come on down, tell them. I, uh, the professor is probably tired of listening to my stories, so when you guys <laughs> come down here, share some of your fun stories with the professor. Never tired of your stories, Abro. <laughs> Come on. Uh, what do they have to say when they come down here, Professor? Who sent them? They have to tell us that the bro man sent them. Yes, the bro man sent you. Tell, say that to them and you're instantly part of this beautiful, amazing family. Right. <laughs> Immediately welcome to the family. Yeah. Well, Professor, this was an awesome time, as always. But speaking of time, do you happen to know what time it is? Ah, uh, bro. Uh, hey, you, the right o'clock, you gotta go. <laughs> yes sir, it's right o'clock, let's go! If you're new to Bro Man, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. Alright, so let's do our first test. Let's do a couple of U-turns and see how this thing maneuvers, shall we? <laughs> I like it. Easy to maneuver, easy to maneuver. <laughs> Which brings us to our second test, our pull test. Let's see how this puppy pulls. <laughs> yes sir, the boxer engine. <laughs> it's quite good, quite quite good. A big difference from the 310s that I've been doing the last few weeks. Not bad at all. This is not bad at all. Now let's talk about the first impressions. Again, no windshield, no fairing, none of that. A uh, good amount of wind. I'm getting a good amount of wind. It's a nice warm day today. So the wind isn't bothering me at all. The riding position, uh, you have to reach out for the bars a little bit, the handlebars a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit, you're not, you're not leaned over like you would be on a sports bike. But there's a little bit of reach for the handlebars. Um, my feet are not bent weirdly, they're quite comfortable. Quite comfortable. Let's check out the brakes. Mm, nice, nice. Very nice. I like the brakes. Okay, I'm 5'10", 31 inch inseam, flat footed quite easily. I like this little single gauge here. <laughs> quite old school if you ask me. Pretty cool. I love the round mirrors as well. Uh, and you can see more than just your shoulders on these. So That's a score. That's a score. <laughs> Check out the brakes again. Front brakes only. Boom. No problemo, no problemo. <laughs> uh, now like I'm stopped at the red light and if you give it gas, yeah, those boxer twins, the opposed twins, they kind of pull you in each direction. That's pretty cool. It's not sure if this has a quick shifter. Let's try it out. Nope, this does not have a quick shifter. So yeah, not a big deal. Just doesn't have a quick shifter. <laughs> Uh, this bike is a pretty cool bike. It's uh, it's different from what every other bike you see on the road uh, It has that little dual sport look going on for it. I love that beak little beak thing in front where the Where the front fender goes above. Ah, it's cool. Is this a bike you can use for commuting? Yes, you can Yes, you can now granted this does not have any storage space uh, fairing, none of that, so you would need uh, to carry a backpack of some sort uh, for your laptop and other belongings. 
But yeah, you could commute on this. Could you use this bike for touring? Well, maybe a couple of hundred miles or so. Uh, not long distances. Uh, yeah, this has got enough power, but no wind protection, no music, no, no storage space. Now for storage space, I'm guessing you could buy aftermarket saddlebags, panniers, all of that. Uh, but yeah, I just wouldn't use this as my touring motorcycle seating position while it's quite comfortable for your normal rides yeah you want a much more relaxed position for touring is this a good bike for beginners no <laughs> this is not a great bike for beginners uh this puts out quite a good amount of power yeah i wouldn't say this is the best bike for beginners just based on the fact about the, the power delivery of this bike uh, it's great for for intermediate riders uh, people who've ridden for a couple of years have a few years of riding experience and want to get into the heritage lineup of BMW sure it's great for them but not for someone who is brand new to motorcycling noop 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 let's head to the punk and talk about the cost of ownership and assign it at bromance score shall we this requires us break in service at 600 miles and a service every 6000 miles or one year whichever comes first the services at your local bmw dealership should be around 400 bucks the tires on this motorcycle should get you anywhere between seven to 10,000 miles. A lot of it is gonna depend upon how you ride it. The cost of these tires are about 450. So over a two year period, assuming you ride 5,000 miles a year, you would need three services and a set of new tires. That's a total of 1650 divided by the number of days. It's about $2.25 a day. Let's assign it a score, shall we? On the looks, it's an eight and a half out of 10. On the brop, it's an eight out of 10. On the maintenance, it's a seven out of 10. And on the comfort, it's a seven and a half out of 10 for a combined Broman score of 7.75 out of 10. So in conclusion, this is expanding the R90 lineup that BMW offers with the Urban GS. It's got a little bit of GS flair to it. You could take it over gravel where the road ends, I guess, uh, where the paved road ends. Probably wouldn't do a lot of off-roading with it just because of the boxer engine, how everything is set, so it's set a little lower than what you would have on the regular GS and the GSAs, the 1250s. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a good bike. A lot of power. It's a Beamer, so it, the balance is awesome. Uh, the brakes are amazing. This is not a bike that I would use to go long distance touring, and definitely not a bike for beginners. Is the R90 the bike for you? Well, head on down to to your closest BMW dealership and check one out take one for a spin and see what you think and if you come down to motorcycles of Greensboro just tell them that the bowman sent you <laughs> keep your knees in the breeze and I will see you soon bro out <laughs>